How you doing, everybody out there? This is Chris Holmes, ex-WASP member. Got my band, Mean Man, and you're listening to Total Rock. Rock on! I'm here in Northampton with the legend Chris Holmes. Chris, how are you enjoying being on tour in England? Well, I love it this time. It's great because I get to sing. Last time I was, I, could, I couldn't sing because my voice, uh, I had, um, I was going through cancer, um, what the radiation did to my voice. And uh, this time I'm over, I'm over that and I get to sing and have, sing my songs that I wrote. Absolutely. And yeah. you, so you, you are on the road to recovery now. You yeah. really are getting better. I mean, that's fantastic yeah. news. I mean, you look amazing. I mean, obviously one good thing that's come out of it is that you are, you're looking so fit. I mean, in a way, well, you know, it, it kind of, kind of, uh, you know, made you well, didn't it? In a way, you well, know? I looked like a skeleton last year. I was, I was down to really too thin. I looked really sick. When I looked at the video, I go, ah, God. I looked, yeah, I was, so, so I'm starting to get gain a little bit of weight, and I'm starting to feel better. Now. Well, you're looking yeah. amazing, and yeah. you do not look your age. And today it is your 65th birthday, Chris. Happy birthday! Yeah. 65 years ago, I was born on this day, you know, and it was my dad's birthday. My dad, but he's passed about two months ago. But it, yeah, I was born on the same day, day as my dad. Okay, that's and, and amazing. And I, I used to see him do things, you know, um, when I'd hang around him. You know, I haven't been been back to LA for ten years, but when I'd see him do things, I'd go, "Man, it's exactly what I would do." Or you know, I, I we ever, I'd act the same in certain things, you know. But, yeah, born on the same day. And did you think that you would make it to 65? I mean, I think I've heard things from you that you've said in the press before about I maybe would, thinking you wouldn't make it this far. I did well in the third when I was in my 30s. I didn't think it, and in, in my 20s, I didn't care. I didn't want to. I, if I did, I'd be like, if I did, I did. But uh, you know, I don't really care. I didn't care if I did. I just lived, lived day by day. You know, now, now I'd like to make it to 100. I don't. Hey. I don't think I will. I don't know what I'd be doing at 100. You know. I can still, at least at 65, I can still play. My legs work, my hands work, my ears work, and I can see. So I'm still gonna, I'm gonna play till I can. And you're an advocate of life only gets better as you get older, are you? Kinda. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's a lot of things you can't do, you know. It's, I just don't get up out of bed that fast anymore. And, and, uh, <laughs> I was laying in the car trying to sleep today where I would have been asleep years ago, but it's just, just yeah, you're just, I'm just older, 65. Yeah. And oh. then I, I can also, I'm, I'm eligible for my retirement. Mm, yeah. yeah, absolutely. But I don't think I'm going to get it. I don't, I, I'm not, I don't need it right now, so why get it? But you are living in Europe now, and yeah. one of the things we all love about you, Chris, is that you love Europe, don't you? You, and you love being here, and you live here now. You live in yep, France. I live in France. And what do you think of the UK and the UK fans? Well, I, I love it in the UK because everybody speaks English. When I'm in France. I don't speak an inch of French. I haven't learned it. It's not. I don't want to say. I don't want to say I hate the language because I don't. My wife's French. The family where I live, everybody speaks French. Very romantic. It's the culture. Yeah, yeah. It's the culture. Um, I, I. I I have dyslexia. I've had it all my life, so I never even learned to speak English properly. <laughs> <laughs> so as speaking another language, you know, I can speak Spanish, do re mi fa so la ti do, and that's about it. French, I know avoir, <laughs> sava, avoir, and um, I know parlez-vous français. But I don't then, know why, when I don't they know say why, yes, you can't say anything more. But then I'm exactly you, the same as you, so uh, well, I, I, I can't speak French. And I'm supposed to have studied it at school, but I can't remember I, any of it. I don't know why I can remember Polyvoo Francais. I think it has something to do with a cartoon when I was a kid. Oh. Polyvoo Francais. But I, I remember my stepdad said that to Sarah. And I was when he said that, I was like, his name's Woody. I was like, Woody speaks French? And that's all he knew. <laughs> but... <clears throat> From him saying that, Polyvu French say means, do you speak French? And so if somebody French goes, Polyvu French say, that means, do you speak French? But I always go to people, no Polyvu French say. Right? But you're in England at the moment, and we do speak English. Yeah. Do you love touring, Chris? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. It's, 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 
it's a little tiring sometimes, you know, and it's boring just sitting in a car waiting or, or traveling to get to the next spot. I've traveled to get here from 10.30 in the morning and got here at 4. So that's five and a half hours. And it's a little just time consuming. It's all right. You know, some people can travel nicer than others, but it's just the way it is. And uh, I, lo- I love playing. I like playing. I like playing music, you know, so. What's your favorite tour story? My favorite tour story? Um, yeah. I toured with Sabbath and became friends with Tony Iommi. Okay, um, I've interviewed him. He's a nice guy. He was great. He's yeah. one of my idols. Without him, heavy metal wouldn't be what it is today. Yeah, and he lost his finger and he learned how to play with... And who knows well, if kn- it would have been the same thing if he hadn't had his accident. He knew how to play before. He yeah, just yeah, yeah. he was his, It was his last day at work. And it was <laughs> yes, a metal press. <laughs> chopped up the end of his fingers and uh yeah 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 i would be i just smashed my fingers last week in the window real bad i thought i broke them yeah 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 you can see the little i just ah first i thought they were broken i stuck them in ice what did you do stuck them in ice no how did you hurt them i was an idiot opening a window and i had my fingers around the, the top part and when i pushed up it just I was, I was an idiot. I was an idiot. I did it. I did it at Batman's. Oh right, yeah, at, yeah, yeah, yeah. Inside. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing to see that you're still doing this because I read in the press that at one point you actually went and took your guitars and you put them in the basement and you decided that you weren't going to do this anymore. I mean, you're in a very different at, place now. What were you thinking yeah. then, and what are you thinking now? That was compared? about. That was about um. Uh, 90, 92. I was just so, um, what I played music for and why I played it wasn't what was happening, going on, and uh, it's the way they ran Wasp, it's just, it, it was a, it was a chore, it was worse than having a job, I would rather have been in jail, and it was just depressing, I didn't want it, to, it got to the point where I didn't want to even play music anymore. I shoved my guitars in California, the houses are built, you know, on foundation, and to, so air goes through the houses they, on down on foundation. They got screens that are concreted in, you know. And at my brother's house, we just push the screens in. I put my guitars underneath his house, so I wouldn't lose them. I had no play, other place to put them, and I just quit playing and left for a while. And, uh, and what changed your mind? What brought you back? And why do you um, love it now? A, I would like. A, Blackie had, or Steve Edward Duran, let's say that, had a roadie call me that worked for Wasp that I went to school with, that knew me. He knew where I was. He called me at 94 and went, uh, Blackie wants to talk to you. And I was like, what does he want? He goes, he wants to know if you want to tour again. So I called him up. He goes, he asked if I want to tour again. I, I go, if you, you want an answer right now, it's no. He goes, can you give me one next week? He, I go, he, I go, I give you one in two weeks. And he goes, can you do it within a week? Because if you say, yeah, I have to be setting up this or that or this. And I go, okay, I'll just think about it one week. I'll call you back and tell you if I will, will do it. And I sat and I thought about it. And I was like, man, I don't want to do what I, what I was doing before. It's not what I, why I do music. It was, it was not enjoyable. I hated it. Um, being from Pasadena, watching Van Halen grow up from playing parties to what they do and how the com- com- robbery, whatever, com- 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 camaraderie, ah, I did it. Or the band, that's what I dreamed of doing. It wasn't like that. Yeah, so, um, I thought about it, it was 94, and I was like, wow, if I don't tour, I'll never see the world again. I was, I was up in Wyoming at my sister's ranch, and I was staying there, going to stay there, and then, so I thought about it, I said, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see Europe again. So I called him back and said, yeah. He goes, Blackie told me, he goes, everything's, it's changed, the band and every, you know, the way it's ran. No, it was still the same bull, bullshit then. When I came back to work, it was just depressing then. But, I just stayed to myself. I did my thing, stayed my, I, you know, don't talk to me, I'll be good on, I'll, don't worry about me on stage, I do my job, and uh, it's just, you know, it's just the way it is.
because and, I mean, and, I've just been to a party that you've just had for your 65th, you know, yeah. with with fans and saw the way that you are with people and you're absolutely brilliant with people, you know, you, you, you just get on with people so well. And then sitting in the dressing room and seeing you with your band and seeing yeah. how it is, it's like a real family. Yeah, I mean, be. you have now maybe created that thing that you always wanted for oh, yourself, yeah. like yes. a team around yourself. Yeah, that's why I enjoy, I enjoy playing and be, enjoy being around the guys I'm with and playing with the guys I'm with, you know. For the first group I had here, I had a, it was all French guys, the very first group, and it, it was kind of, you know, there's, there's a few little attitudes there, and my wife told the guitar player that uh, you're going to eventually kick yourself out of the band, and he didn't believe me, and he did. And um, it's, yeah, I got all English people up now. Um, well, I, got, well, I don't want to say that. I got a French guy back in the band. Oh, you yeah, have Florian? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, they're playing with me because we got two teams, you know. But everybody gets on yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. They're not, I'm not playing with them. Well. I'm not going to, I don't want to play with them. You know, I don't, it's not worth it. I'm 65 years old. I got, you know, my time on this planet is limited, right? So I want to enjoy the last few years of what I've ever, I got on this planet. Welcome to Dawn Osborne in Session, sponsored by Fireworks Magazine. Today I'll be talking to Chris Holmes, formerly of Wasp, who recently had his 65th birthday and about his future plans. How you doing everybody out there? This is Chris Holmes from Wasp and Mean Man. You're listening to Don Osborne on Total Rock. How you doing everybody? Wait, do you think you were born to play guitar, Chris, or could you have done something else and just been just as happy? Oh man, I could have done a lot of things. I never, what do you think I you would have done if you know, weren't a guitarist? I'd have been a bank robber, <laughs> a crook, <laughs> or, <laughs> or a drug dealer. You know, you with see, a lot of money sitting somewhere. You, listen, you never hear. You always hear about the guys that get caught. Okay, you never hear That's about the guys who don't. Everybody gets caught eventually. No. Well, let's, well look, if, if put it this way, if you want to deal drugs and get away with it, then you join the government. All right. The biggest. Well, the biggest. You're not in America now, Chris. No, but, but that's the way it is. The biggest. The biggest drug sellers in the world are the governments. They are. You know, my friend. My friend was in the military in 1980s. He worked in special forces when they um when they took over Panama from Noriega right and he said two trucks the kind with the dual wheels in the back that sit like 16 guys eight guys on each side can't they pulled in two trucks of those like that loaded with not humans but cocaine on a C-130 transport plane in Panama he drove one of the trucks in he knows that they loaded them up with cocaine of where Noriega was. Pulled them on. He asked where they're going, and his sergeant said, I wouldn't, you, you don't have nothing to say about it. So he kept his mouth shut. The plane took off. He watched it take off from the air base, and it was going to America. Where do you think happened to that? Well, when that lands in America, there's no customs on a military base. Plane lands. He asked, he just wanted to know so where... So it went on the black market, and the government did something with it you know maybe they were using it for taking the mafia down or something though you never know you never know but they're the biggest drug drug dealers there are you know there is a reason why i did ask you that question though and that's because i thought that you really want to be happy as a person you know to you the most important thing is being happy i am yeah and and that's why i asked you because i thought you were going to say that you know that you could have done lots of things as long as you were happy because i think you are a man who follows your heart yeah yeah it's like every job i ever had and worked i did a you know i was never never was fired from them uh um I didn't. I didn't enjoy work. I worked at Sirwin Vega Speaker Company. A speaker company. Yeah, and I, right, okay. but I worked. I got paid a paycheck, and I had to go. I didn't enjoy going to work, you know, because I get paid. I wanted to play music, but um, I enjoy playing music. There's nothing better than doing something you enjoy and getting paid at. You know, like could you imagine um, a prostitute? 
<laughs> well, if she enjoys it, you're getting into dodgy ground here. But I want to ask yeah. you, right, so happiness is important. Is money and fame important, Chris, or not? No. No. You don't think the, so? Uh, after 65 me, years, happiness is the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. To me, the fame, it's a, a lot of, you know, what I've, I've, I've had the opportunity because of my parents went like this and made me um, and my person my personality whatever I'm lucky I'm tall I, I'm not bald yet um, I look the way I do because of my parents I'm very fortunate to be who I am I got some friends that play guitar that will never be able to stand on the stages that I've been stood on and played because their personalities is just they just ain't, there's they just don't have what it takes they play guitar. They want to do it, but it's to certain people, you know. And I'm lucky to be. Bl I'm blessed to be yeah, who yeah, I yeah. am. I'm still doing it. I'm still looking yeah. fit, and I know you were ill, but you're looking amazing at the moment. Have you done everything that you want to do in life, Chris? Have you got other? Have you no, still I, got things on your bucket list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's um. I had a bucket list. I was talking to somebody the other day. I forgot what it is. That'll um, be being 65. <laughs> it could be one. One of the bucket lists was go to Mount St. Michelle. Okay. I went there last year, right, right. after I could, I got, I um, got out, right after I got um, off the feeding tube from having cancer, and I could kind of walk. We went to Mount St. Michelle, and I went to Normandy. I wanted to three years ago, but I, there was something that we needed to do in France that came up and we were going to go to Normandy I wanted to go see all the grave sites it's always been a bucket list of mine World War II the, what happened to soldiers that died there okay. I always wanted to go there and um, we had to go take care of what I had to go we had to go straight to France and take care of what I needed to so we didn't go then when I got a little bit better from the cancer then somebody said hey they wanted me to come to Brittany and when we go to Brittany we went to Mount St. Michel Oh, there's a bucket list of mine to walk around it at, when the tide was out, walk around it. We did that, and then we went to Normandy, and I saw all the grave sites, and that was a bucket list. There was another bucket list of mine. And um, generally, these are things like traveling things. You like to travel and see places. Yeah. Because you said that what tempted you back to work in music again was traveling well, the world. You, but when you're traveling a rock group, you're usually trying to sleep all day and to play at night. And then you, to the next, how you get to the next gig is you travel at night and then you sleep, you know, so you don't get to see too much. You, you don't know? get, do you get days off now where you get a chance to look around? Yeah, yeah. Well, this, we good. were from Edinburgh was last um, Sunday. Then we had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we played yesterday. And then tonight, and then I play tomorrow night and the next night. And then that's, we go back to France. Okay, yeah. and France is a beautiful country yeah. as well. Now, a lot of people, they might well say, I mean, they do say to me, I ask them, if you could be on stage with anyone, who would it be? And they quite often say, Wasp. If you could be on stage with anyone, alive or dead, who would you have been on stage with? Um, be Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ? Yeah. A musician, come on. Jesus oh, a musician, musician. Yeah. Elvis Presley. Okay, 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 sorry, that you're right, my question was not specific enough, you're it, the only person who has picked me up on that. It'd be Elvis, <laughs> Elvis Presley, I'd kick him right, I'd kick him right in the audience, I'd go, if you stand in front of me, I'll kick you in the audience, <laughs> you know, uh, no, I would have probably got along with him really good. I hope so, I hope so. yeah, I mean, I love Elvis, I love oh, Elvis, he, I used to watch his films and everything when I was a kid, if... He, you, if someone was going to play you in a film, Chris, yeah. who would it be? Who would you choose to play Brad, you in a film? Brad Pitt would be perfect. Brad Pitt? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd want him to play. Well, I, you know, I, I worked on the movie Rockstar. Mark Wahlberg did a good job in that movie. Yeah. He did. But yeah. Brad Pitt would be a, he'd be a, I think he'd be a good one to play What me. did you do on the movie Rockstar? Well, the, the when they filmed them playing live in the audience... Nobody was going to come and see that band because they weren't known. So it was um, Great White, Megadeth, Wasp, and somebody else. I forget. It could have been Faster Pussycat played at the sports arena. And Wasp was last, Megadeth, and then they they filmed Zach Wilde and, and um, the band, the band guys. It, uh, um, John Bonham's son was a drummer. Okay, yeah. Um, 
and the other guys, Jeff Pilson was the bass player. I don't know who the okay. other guys were. I know Zach Wild. They filmed that, but everybody came to see the bands play, and they filmed in between. And, like, we were supposed to play at 12, and I was like, this this is going to be bad. I think we played at 3.30 in the morning because <laughs> the filming ran over. But we just played in the sports arena. It was, like, for free. Or people paid three bucks to come and see all f four bands, but then they had to f watch the film, the movie. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, talking about films, I was amazed at the Q&A at Monsters of Rock Cruise to find out that not only did they get you drunk when they did that interview in the decline of Western civilization, but they never, ever paid you. They were supposed to pay you, and they never paid you. No. Well, <laughs> she, she paid the management. Oh, okay. that's a different thing. So it wasn't well, no, his no. honesty. Listen, it was the manager. <laughs> she called me personally. She called me personally. She could fucking pay me personally. That's oh, the way I look at it. Right. She can pay me. That's the way, you know, she called me personally. Well, you can pay me personally. Don't pay Blackie Lawless and Rod Smallwood. Oh, I see. Fuck those guys. Oh, yeah, I yeah. See. So I she see. paid the check. We didn't clarify that then. So that, I'm glad I clarified that because I, yeah, okay. It is, yeah. I think it's a slight well, she, distinction. She that, paid. Yeah. She called me personally, and she could pay me personally. Why'd she pay the management? She should have called the management to see if I could do the movie. Yeah, right? I mean, I get it. I get it because actually they didn't get the job for you. No, I get it. Yeah, I get yeah, it, yeah. Get so it. she still owes me three hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. And actually, the value of that's going down over time, Chris, so you need to get it sooner rather than later. If you were going to tell somebody something that they wouldn't expect about you, what would people not expect about you? I, I usually, I, I couldn't answer that. I don't know. Are you an open book? Is that what you're saying? Like a lot of people do. What you see is what you get. Oh, so yeah. what people expect from you, they generally see. Yeah, well, you so are I'm not, I'm what they a, expect. I don't think I won't be a fake person. I never have been. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, yeah. People think in the decline that was that was so I faked that. Why it was it was only the real you when you really really wasted no, them. It was not no, the real you when you're sober. <laughs> no, I'm completely different when I'm sober. Yeah, exactly. You know? So are most people. Yeah, so oh yeah, it's, I'd get drunk and turn into an asshole. I love being an asshole. <laughs> are you, you know? planning to record any new music? You know, are you yeah. putting an album together? Tell us a little I, bit about that. I got some songs, some ideas I put together. What, what, uh, what I did, which was really stupid, when I did my built my last computer was a Mac. I didn't back up the hard drive, oh. and I've never I've never really backed up a hard drive on a Macintosh anyway. But my Mac, the hard drive crashed, right. and it had the Pro Tools on it. And I've been trying to get a new. Um, I I got the operating system and everything for it. It's like a 2008, but I can't find the Pro Tools for it. So, and I'm too cheap to get a new one because a new one you got to pay Pro Tools monthly, and I don't like right, that. Yeah, that's I true. don't like that. I, you know, I'd rather I would rather use a cracked one where I don't got to pay them. <laughs> no, crack. he didn't say I'd that. I'd rather a cracked one. Yeah, what's wrong with that? <laughs> what's wrong with that? I've always used cracked ones. You know. Uh, yeah. You'll have Microsoft chasing you. You'll have Apple they chasing can, you. you come and hey, come and get me. Come and get me. <laughs> come and get it. And Chris, what's next for you? Hey, and another thing, YouTube. You know how many <laughs> songs I stole off YouTube? No. I probably recorded over 3,800, 4,000 songs on, a, on one of these recorders. Okay. Off the headphone jack. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's all the record companies that are coming They you Come and well. get me. Come, and, come on to my... You know, where you, get, you know where you get a hold of me. Come and get it. Well, they got to see you in France Come and get now. it. That's they, a bit more difficult. They can come and get so. it. You know, you can come on and get it. And what's immediately next for you? And, you know, are you looking forward? Do you, are you someone who looks forward? Are you someone who has plans? How far do your plans no, I, go forward? It's, it's, they're not that far. Not that far? No, no. It's, I, you know, I don't even know if we have shows. I want to play on the boat next year, but they uh, haven't asked me. I'm not, I wasn't booked on it. I think the guy, well, I was booked on the one before we played, and I got cancer. I had to, so he says, Chris, I'm going to rebook you the next year. And I was, like, bummed. And he goes, take care of yourself. And then the next year came, so I played. 
And it uh, went down amazingly well. And Larry uh, loves you. Larry, the person who yeah. owns the cruise, absolutely loves you. Uh, and you uh, went down really, really well. And I hope he books So you're well placed. It's just that they tend to book like a year in advance. Yeah, two so, years. I mean, maybe they can still get you in. But, you know, I mean, I, I think generally you're going to be back. We know oh, you're yeah. going to be back. You're oh, definitely yeah. going to be back. That was, one, that was one of the funnest times I've had in, a long, in my life. And, you know, he spent all his time talking to all the fans and everything. It was wonderful. Yeah. You were wonderful. As I said, you're a brilliant person with people. Chris, thank you yeah. so much for making some time to talk to us. Yeah. And thank you to the Fido over there. It's, it's given us a constant little... Uh, it's a a <laughs> Yes, exactly. It's not your dog, is it, Chris? No, no. That's a, that's a, Weimar, <laughs> that's a Weimaraner. Thank you so yeah. much. Cool. Chris Holmes, everybody, he really is one of the most personable people you can meet. You know, when you see him with fans, he's just absolutely great. I 